Ja. So, this is the first group we have. Even hydrogen is also placed in this group only. If you look at the elements of these groups, we have hydrogen, then lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. These are the elements we have, right? These are metals also. S block elements are good metals. If you go left to right in a in a periodic table, the metallic properties or metallic nature decreases. Metallic nature is nothing but the tendency to lose electron. Okay, so few properties you should understand, which is common in all the groups. Okay, you will see here. Whatever you know, few properties we'll see in alkali metals here. That also goes true. Like no, that is also true with the alkaline earth metal, which is group two elements. Correct. So we'll try to understand first few general things here. Like you see, if you talk about the elements here, why these elements are placed in group one, and why we are calling it as S block elements. How do we define blocks in periodic table? Any idea? How do we define different different blocks? Why do we place sodium in S block? Why not in P block? See, when you draw the electronic configuration of any elements. Synthetic resins we don't discuss here, Shitesh. It is a uh, little bit is there in uh, polymers chapter, which also they have removed. Okay, that's why we are not discussing synthetic resins over here. Okay. Valence electron enters in S subshell, right? So for any elements you see, if you look at the electronic configuration, like for example, if I take boron, boron is the first element of P block, correct? Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, and 2p1. So if the last electron goes into p subshell here, that's why it is the p block element. So how do we define a block and how do we place an element in a given block? It depends upon where the last electron for that particular element, you know. Where it goes, the last electron, where it goes, in which subshell or in which shell it goes, right? So if the last electron goes into S subshell, it is said to be an S block element. Same goes with P block and D block also. Okay. So for all these elements, you see there is one pattern that you need to understand. There is, you know, uh, for all for all these elements, you see last electron it goes into S. Subshell. Okay. If you look at the configuration here, electronic configuration, I'll show you hydrogen has only one electron, right? So its configuration is 1s1. It has three electron, so it is 1s2, 2s1. It has 11 electron, so it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s1 similarly for potassium rubidium cesium and francium is this atomic number correct yeah 3s1 so if you look at the electronic configuration this we can also write as helium 2s1 or this one is neon 3s1 this one is argon 4s1 this one is krypton 5s1 if you have if you have this it is xenon 
six S one, and the last one is radon seven S one. So for all these elements, you see the electronic configuration. The last electron goes into S subshell, and hence it is S block elements, right? And since we have, we can have only two electrons in S orbital, right? That's why we have only two groups in S block, group one and group two, because we can have only two possible configuration. Either we can have S one or we can have S two. So group one has S one configuration, the outermost shell, and group two has S two configuration, the outermost shell. Right, outermost. Correct. So this is how we, you know. Place or you know define the blocks of a given elements. Okay, now if you look at this electronic configuration, the general electronic configuration of the elements of group one, general electronic configuration, we can say it is n s one outermost. Sorry. Outermost electronic configuration n s one. when n is the period of the element n is the period of the element any doubt till here how do we define alkali metals we define alkali metals as this is the metals which reacts with metals which reacts with water and forms and forms hydrogen gas h2 gas right which reacts with water and forms hydroxide liberates hydrogen are said to be alkali metals hydrogen does not react with water right hydrogen does not react with water hence hydrogen however it is placed in group 1 it is not considered as the alkali metal so out of all these you see this the first element here we have hydrogen it is not an alkali an alkali metal if you look at the difference here it is 18 18 and then 32 so this number 2 8 8 18 18 32 you all know this number is called what this number is called magic number for okay magic number for group 1 if you know these numbers you can find out the atomic number of any lower elements belongs to this group then yes finished now you look at the properties of these alkali metals the first one write down atomic and atomic and ionic red eye 
sorry. Yeah, tell me what is the trend for this two we have? What happens as we go down the group? Yes, atomic radius and ionic radius increases down the group. The reason is what? So, write down. Right. So, first of all, write down here. Yeah. write down as we go down the group as we go down the group the radius whether it is atomic radius or ionic radius the radius increases obviously we have poor shielding effect but as you go down the group, one extra shell is getting added, right? After 1s, we'll get 2s, then we'll get 3s, 4s, 5s. So you're going away from the nucleus, right? Like this. Like this. We're going away from the nucleus, correct? Hence the size increases. So write down as we go down the group, as we go down the group, The atomic and ionic radius increases. Because of less effective nuclear charge. And due to the addition of one extra shell. due to the presence of due to the presence of an extra shell okay done right so based on this information, we can have two, three property you can understand. Like you see, size is, is increasing right down the group. So we have this first, then it becomes this, then it becomes this, then it becomes this, and so on, right like this. So if you talk about the ionization energy. So as we go down the group, what happens with ionization energy? Could you tell me? Ionization energy decreases. And why it decreases? Yeah. So what we can say here, you see clearly you can understand that as you go down the group, the size is increasing. So distance of the center and the outermost electron also increases, right? You see this? Right, it increases. Okay, so as the distance increases, it is easier to take the electron out means you required lesser energy to break this attraction pull so that the electron comes out right so first thing is what with size we can relate ionization energy when we say 
as size increases ionization energy decreases ionization energy decreases means tendency to lose electron is more correct means electro positive character increases means the metal converts into an electro positive ion so it has more tendency to release electron means more electro positive nature right and as the electro positive character you know increases tendency to becomes more electro positive is more it means it is releasing electron then only it is becoming as you know more uh, electron releasing a uh, more electron releasing nature it is right so hence as we go down the group the electro positive character tendency to forms the positive ions that also increases since ionization energy decreases so so to tendency to form electro positive ions also increases which we call it as electro positive character right so electro positive character increases if you talk about the metallic nature down the group the metallic nature uh, you know increases again the same reason size increases attraction is more right aside attraction is less hence removal of electron is easier and hence it has more tendency to form the electro positive ion and more tendency to release electron more tendency to release electron means more ionization or oh, sorry less ionization energy so with this we can relate two three properties here the first one is write down ionization energy ionization energy write down quickly as we go down the group as we go down the group once again guys yeah as we go down the group size increases ionization energy decreases so i'll write down this way here we have sorry and when i write ionization energy it automatically it means we are talking about first ionization energy ionization energy decreases means metallic character metallic character increases electro positive nature also increases okay next write down third sorry yeah third property is if you talk about the oxidation state only one possibilities alkali metal always shows
एल्केलि मेटल ऑलवेज शोज प्लस वन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ओके प्लस वन ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट एनी कंपाउंड इफ यू सी एन ए टू एस ओ फोर एन ए सी एल राइट एल आई सी एल एनी एग्जाम्पल यू कैन टेक ओके द नेक्स्ट वन इज हाइड्रेशन एनर्जी Okay, what is hydration energy? Anybody? What is hydration energy? What is the difference between solvation energy and hydrogen energy? is there any similarity or is there any difference between solvation energy and yeah that's right okay see whenever you dissolve we you dissolve a compound into any solvent say any solvent say right dissolution generally is an exothermic process okay it is endothermic also in some cases but in general it is exothermic when you dissolve something in water or any solvent there will be some amount of heat releases energy releases okay very simple example you have you have some suppose this detergent powder right any detergent powder surf excel any one you can take take a small amount of it put it on your palm add some water right just four five droplets of water you add okay little bit of water you add and when you close this you will see you will feel some warm inside right when it dissolves you'll feel a bit of heat over there on your palm right that heat is the heat energy that liberates when the detergent dissolves in dissolves in the water right it's a very simple example of you know exothermic process it is so basically dissolution is in general exothermic process means whenever you dissolve a solid or any substance into any solvent there is a fixed amount of energy releases okay so what is solvation energy first of all we'll discuss the solvation energy is the amount of energy released when one mole of any compound any so any solute dissolve in dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a given temperature at a given temperature for a given amount of solvent one mole of solute if you dissolve then the amount of energy that releases is called solvation energy correct one mole given amount of solvent and a given temperature because dissolution is temperature dependent also right that's why we define this for a given temperature for a one mole of substance hydration energy is also exactly same and it is a term hydration is a term that we use when the solvent is water that is it okay so for water we have a specific term that is hydration energy right otherwise for any other solvent we we call it as solvation energy correct so hydration energy is basically a type of solvation energy right it is another name of solvation energy solvation energy we call it as hydration energy when the solvent is water correct now what happens here uh, the solvation or hydration energy depends upon the degree of hydration right as the size of cation is more degree of hydration is less a smaller amount a smaller size can easily hydrate it okay so hydration energy write down it is the amount of write down it is the amount of energy release it is the amount of energy release when one mole of any substance
when one mole of any substance dissolve in water dissolve in water at a given temperature dissolve in water at a given temperature right so degree of hydration actually you see degree of hydration means ten, uh, extent basically degree of hydration is inversely proportional to the size of cation bigger the size lesser will be the hydration and hence lesser will be the hydration energy so hydration energy decreases as we go down the group for this cation li plus will have maximum then we have na plus k plus ch plus hydration energy degree of hydration and hydration energy both we can say okay understood okay next write down next write down reducing nature See, reducing nature is means what? That the atoms should oxidize and reduce others, right? So it means oxidize itself and reduce others. This is the reducing nature. Oxidize itself means what? it is nothing but the tendency to lose electron right as you lose electron as you lose electron oxidation takes place and it can reduce others right and under what condition it can lose electron when the element has low ionization energy then only it can easily lose electron so basically low ionization energy means low means more reducing nature right so basically if you combine all these things you'll see as we go down the group as we go down the group ie decreases and reducing nature increases right so if you compare li it has lesser reducing nature than na then k rb and cs this is the order we have in free state free state free state means gaseous state basically no if suppose we have a metal m if it loses electron it converts into m plus plus 1 electron so this is oxidation 
So metal itself is going under oxidation and hence it is reducing others. Just give me a second. Right. It gains, it releases electron and hence it reduces, uh, it, it gets oxidized and reduces others. Right. That's how the thing is. Understood? Correct. Okay. So when you talk about this reducing nature in gaseous state, free state, the concept that you are using is ionization energy. here. But this is not the factor. Ionization energy is not the factor when we consider this in aqueous state, in solution, right? So write down next thing here. In this only you write down. However, the tendency of loose electron in solution. However, the tendency to lose electron in solution depends upon depends upon many factors. Okay, like you see, we have the solid metal M solid. First of all, you need to provide the enthalpy of sublimation. That is delta H of sublimation. So that from solid it converts into gas. Okay, so enthalpy of sublimation is involved. Now to oxidize this, what we need to do? You need to provide ionization energy. It converts into M plus gas plus one electron. So ionization energy also involved over here, right? And then when you dissolve this in water, H2O, it converts into M plus aqueous plus the energy involves here releases that energy. We call it as hydration energy. So hydration energy is basically depends upon depends upon these three terms enthalpy of sublimation, ionization energy, and obviously the size of the cation that you are getting. Right? Because this energy that comes out, it depends upon the size of this cation. And we know size of the cation is less, extent of hydration is more, more energy releases. Okay. So in case of solution, what happens? The order of hydration energy, right? Is we know it is maximum for Li plus. And based on that, we write down the reducing nature. The Li plus will have the maximum reducing nature in solution since it has the maximum hydration energy, right? So reducing power, you write down in solution. In solution, it is maximum for Li, then Na, K, Rb, etc. Right, we also say it depends upon the standard oxidation potential, right? 
So standard oxidation potential is maximum for lithium. Standard oxidation potential. More is more value of standard oxidation potential. More is the reducing power in solution. Right. Write down more standard oxidation potential. More will be the reducing power in solution. Right. So in solution, it is opposite. Done. Okay. Next slide down. Reactivity towards air. Yeah, write down the next. Reactivity towards air. Reactive towards air when we write it is mainly the reaction with oxygen. Okay, write down alkali metals are very reactive. Alkali metals are very reactive, and on exposure to and on exposure to moist air. Exposure to moist air, they forms oxides, peroxides, and superoxides. Oxides, peroxides, and superoxides. Right. On exposure to moist air, they forms all three types of oxides: oxides, peroxides, and superoxides. So basically, when we have a metal M with oxygen, it forms M two O. This is the oxide we have. Further exposure of oxygen, it converts into M two O two. Which is peroxide, further it converts into MO2, which is superoxide. Tendency to form oxide, it is maximum for like you see here. Oxide is mainly formed by lithium, and to some extent, sodium may also form. Lithium mainly forms oxide only, and to some extent, sodium forms this oxide. If you talk about peroxide, it is mainly formed by sodium. But to some extent, Li also forms this. But it is mainly for sodium. Here it is mainly for lithium. Okay.
Okay. Now, So basically, you see, if you look at the oxides here, the statement that I've given you just now, this means when you have lithium and lithium, when you heat with oxygen, O2, atmospheric oxygen, around 200 degrees Celsius, the temperature is not important. It forms oxide of this type, Li2O. It won't form the peroxide Li2O2. But if you take sodium here that is Na with O2 and if you heat this even at higher temperature it forms peroxide Na2O2 type oxide it forms and this superoxide is mainly formed by the other elements like that is potassium rubidium and cesium and hence we also say that as we go down the group, the tendency to form superoxide increases. Right on the stability of, right on first this point, that the reactivity of metals towards oxygen reactivity of metals towards oxygen increases as we go down the group reactivity of metals towards oxygen increases as we go down the group okay increases as we go down the group next point next point the stability of the stability of peroxides and superoxides the stability of peroxides and superoxides also increases Peroxides and superoxides also increases as we go down the group. Okay, so important property this is. One note you write down here. On exposure on exposure to towards air on exposure to air you write down lithium also combines with nitrogen lithium also combines with nitrogen and forms nitride and forms nitride Right, so the reaction only lithium, not other metals, right? Only lithium we have here. Among all the alkali metals, lithium on exposure to air, it also combines with nitrogen and converts into Li3N nitride. Okay, lithium nitride it is. Only lithium can form this. Okay. See, one thing you must remember, any group, whether it is S block, P block, the first element of every group, I'm giving you this general thing, right? It is valid for all the groups. The first element of all the groups will show some 
will show some abnormal behavior okay like you see lithium is the first element of alkali metals right hydrogen we are not talking about here so it has some abnormal behavior because of its small size less electronegativity and lesser number of electron in the inner shell because of all these things the first element always shows a bit of different behavior right then the other elements of the same group so if you have to choose one like suppose one example if i give you you know this fact that the behavior of first element is different from all other right you know this fact now on now, now you see you got this question like the question is which one of the alkali metals forms nitrides on exposure towards air right you don't have any you don't have any clue like what should be the answer but you know only one point that the behavior of first element is different from the other elements so if the options are given like lithium sodium potassium rubidium right like this four options are given you have to choose one you know the question gives only one correct answer which element show forms nitrides on exposure to air you know the first element has a normal behavior so if you have to choose one if you if you want to have a guess for the question you should go for the first element of that group that is probably most probably gives you the right answer because if potassium shows why not rubidium right why not sodium then because all have the similar kind of behavior but we know the fact that the first elements behaves differently with respect to the other elements so there are high chances that the answer is lithium and you should go for that okay this is true for all the groups even for alkaline earth metal also you will see the behavior of beryllium is different for boron family boron behavior is different carbon behavior is different okay is that's why in ncrt you see they'll give you abnormal behavior of lithium when you open up the book you will see it is written a topic over there abnormal behavior of lithium abnormal behavior of boron beryllium and so on right this is because of their small size and lesser number of electrons in their inner shell okay so this point is general thing you must keep in mind okay so this is one thing now one note you write down here because of high reactivity towards air because of high reactivity towards air alkali metals are kept in kerosene are kept in kerosene because it is non reactive in kerosene this also they ask why alkali metals are kept in kerosene what is the reason for this then okay next write down reactivity reactivity towards water the reaction is 2m plus h2o it forms hydroxide and hydrogen gas evolves into this so alkali metals reacts with water forms hydroxides and evolves hydrogen gas write down the reactivity of alkali metals of alkali metals 
with water increases increases down the group right so reactivity is more the reason is the more rate of reaction okay the rate of reaction also increases and hence the reactivity with water also increases over here done okay next slide down reactivity towards hydrogen what kind of hydride it forms we had discussed last class tell me what kind of hydride it forms yes could you check your notes yeah last class only i had discussed okay ionic hydride it forms okay so write down alkali metals reacts with hydrogen react with hydrogen and forms and forms ionic hydride of mh type ionic hydrides of mh type okay form ionic hydrides of mh type now the properties of these hydrides are important okay so write down into this the first point mh type you have written these hydrides have nacl type structure i'll discuss what is this first few points write down ah uh, i said uh Re alkali metals reacts with hydrogen and forms hydrides of mh type mh type means like this i meant this if you have a reaction 2m plus h2 on heating it gives 2mh means molecular formula is this mh type m is any metal right lithium sodium potassium anything that is mh type first property in write down it has nacl type structure it has nacl type structure the ionic character of these hydrides increases down the group means if you compare lih nah kh the ionic character increases and covalent character decreases anybody explain here why ionic character increases could you explain the reason here why ionic character increases
Yes, tell me. Yes, correct. No, 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 Aditi. Pradeep on that side. See what happens. I have discussed one concept of Fezzan's rule, if you remember. And there we'll talk about. There we'll talk about the polarization. It deals with the ionic character, right? The covalent character in ionic compound. Okay. And there one factor we had discussed that as the size of cation increases. Polarization decreases and covalent character decreases. So as you go down the group, you see Li plus Na plus K plus. The size of cation is is increasing and hence covalent character decreases, ionic character increases. Correct. Next, write down the stability of hydrides decreases down the group. right so from top to bottom if you go top to bottom if you go the stability decreases why stability decreases again size increases bond length increases stability decreases and since stability decreases we can also say reactivity increases all these things are related reactivity increases down the group No doubt. No, in general, we say in general, we say reactivity increases. For any reactions, we can say. Okay. yeah tell me okay so these properties of hydrides you must keep in mind they can ask you any one of these okay relation i have already told you how to relate all these things you can understand easily next write down reactivity towards halogen reactivity towards halogen ha huh, i forgot to discuss one thing nacl type structure means what this in detail you will study in solid state in nacl what happens na and cl minus are present like this in cubic crystal system they arranged like don't draw this okay just you see this in this what happens the na plus present here at the edge center all edge centered na plus is present this is a cube of equal uh, like we have cubes and these edge center we have na plus present plus at the body center also na plus present right so all the red dots you see are na plus and cl minus are present at the corners these corners there are eight corners so we have eight cl minus like this it is present and at the face center all the face center all the face center like this so black dot that you see it is the position of cl minus and red dot is the position of na plus okay this we call it as nacl type structure this we also called rock salt 
type of structure a rock salt structure okay so 12th class you will have solid state there we'll discuss all these things in detail but lithium hydride also it is it has same or the hydrides of alkali metals have similar kind of structure understood next write down reactivity towards halogen write down alkali metals reacts vigorously alkali metals reacts vigorously with halogens and forms and forms halides of and forms halides of mx type like nacl kcl all these types okay halides of mx type reactivity towards halogen if you see it increases down the group because again ionization energy decreases right so for alkali metals the reactivity order is this if you talk about the halogens halogens the reactivity of fluorine is maximum towards any one of the alkali metals okay this is again pm f2 cl2 br2 i2 okay i said the first line under this topic that alkali metals reacts with halogen vigorously v i g o r o u s l y vigorously and forms halides of mx type okay and forms halides of mx type for metal if you look at the reactivity of metal towards any halogen down the group the reactivity increases if you look at this for any halogens for halogen towards any metal the reactivity down the group for halogen decreases it is maximum for fluorine and minimum for iodine why it happens easily you can understand you see the bond nacl if you see i have discussed this many times nacl molecule how it forms first of all it is an ionic compound na plus and cl minus so how na plus forms when sodium releases one electron it forms this right how cl minus forms chlorine takes one electron and forms this okay so here we need to talk about the ionization energy plus enthalpy of sublimation also because solid you need to convert first into gas and then ionization energy here also we have electron affinity right we need to consider here basically halogens are accepting electron and alkali metals are losing electron So electron losing tendency increases down the group hence reactivity is this electron accepting tendency is maximum for fluorine high electronegativity hence reactivity order is this so overall we have these two order clear
Any doubt in this? Okay. Next, write down reactivity towards liquid ammonia. liquid ammonia write down alkali metals are highly soluble in ammonia highly soluble in ammonia write down this solution shows deep blue color this solution shows deep blue color which has the following properties following properties first one the solution is the first one write down like this uh, solution is paramagnetic paramagnetic good conductor of electricity of electricity strong reducing agent reducing agent and irrespective irrespective of metal the color of the solution is blue the solution is blue then the reaction is you see here metal we have solid plus nh3 it gives m nh3 x positive charge plus electron and is 3y negative charge this is the reaction we have this electron is actually surrounded by the ammonia right so this electron we call it as ammoniated electron ammoniated electron and this is responsible for the color of the solution for color 
and hence whatever metal we use irrespective of the metal electron is electron only right so whatever metal we have the color of the solution is blue only ammoniated electron is this we have electron and this electron it's surrounded by ammonia molecule in which hydrogen is towards this electron like this all these have delta plus delta negative and delta positive delta positive delta positive this electron is ammoniated electron because of this only it is conductive the solution is conductive in nature and shows blue color understood okay this electron right down here it is ammoniated electron responsible for the conductive behavior and blue color of the solution important this one is okay must remember this okay so this is it for ammonia solution we'll take a break now and after the break we'll see carbides okay this will start with after the break carbides and then carbonates by carbonates we'll discuss after this fine take a break now we'll resume at 6:30 take a break guys any doubt you have in this yes Fine, guys. So take a break. Six thirty. Yeah.